Okay, so floor tile, floor layout. Um, typically, in a smaller bathroom like this, you always just kind of want to reference the tub. So however you install the tub, make that your square edge uh, because you don't want to really scribe cut anything uneven against the tub. So don't even worry about what your walls are. Just be concerned with the tub and everything off of that is going to be referencing what's square. Um, a lot of these small bathrooms, I mean, they can be tremendously out of square. Um, I believe this one's almost three quarters of an inch out of square, but it doesn't really matter. Don't even concern yourself with that. Just pay attention to the tub. And what I would recommend is just measuring your whole distance of your tub. So 58 and a half. So we'll be at uh, 29 or 28. What the hell would that be? Basically 29 inches, 29 and a quarter inches to the center. So just find your center. And then we're doing 12 by 24 inch tile. So typically, if you just go straight off the center, you're gonna work out fine. You're gonna basically have a couple of six inch pieces on either side. But one thing you wanna pay attention to is the doorway and making sure that you have a full enough tile going into, into the doorway. Now this is a little bizarre because they have the, do the door swinging out into the hallway. So we're gonna be bringing tile all the way into that door jam. Typically, you're only going to right about here because you don't want to see towel on the outside of the door but in this instance um, the door is covering the outside edge so we're going to bring the towel all the way out so that kind of makes it a little bit different but you just want to make sure that you're not going to have to have a small piece at the doorway so just measure over and yeah we got a 10 inch piece there so that's going to work fine but just hand lay them out you know it's really going to be personal preference but the one one rule that the TCNA has, which is the Towel Council of North America, um, is anything over 15 inches long, you want to set on a third pattern. So in a 12 by 24, it's recommended to go 8 inches and 16 inches as far as your joints. So it's st staggering your joints on a third pattern. And the main reason for that is it, it helps with lippage. Lippage is considered the difference between the edges of, of the tile when you set them. If you set them in the middle, and you can even take a look at down, down the, the length of your, your tile and see if there's any type of bow on it. This isn't really all that too bad, but the more bowed it is, the harder it is to keep the lippage from one tile to the other on a staggered pattern. So that's why you wanna go with the, the third pattern that's gonna minimize that curvature in the center. But always pay attention to that. And the other thing you wanna pay attention to is the squareness of the edge. And the only reason you wanna pay attention to that is for your grout joint sizing, because if you have a spacer or a, um, a wedge, or like we're gonna be using a T-lock, uh, uh, a, uh, a leveling system, and if the spacer, if, if, if the side of your tile is more bowed at the bottom, then when you put that spacer in, you're gonna have a bigger grout joint on the top. So just pay attention to the edge of your towel. I always go with clips that are 1 32nd so then I can move uh, the tile around. I, I prefer 16th inch grout joints. To me, that just looks um, better. So it really is up to you on the, on the grout size. But um, yeah, just double check when you lay this out that you're approximately even on either side. So we got a six inch piece there and a five and three quarter inch piece there. So that works out well. Now width length, width wise, I would say anything less than four inches is gonna look like you didn't really plan out very well. So that's all you really wanna pay attention to there. So we'll just measure the full width of this, which is 61, it's a 30 and a, 30 and a half is our center mark. And let's just see what we end up with here. So that's a seven inch piece. Basically, if this was like eight and a half inches, that's not gonna work out well because the third pattern that you do, you don't wanna have a sliver next to the top. But in this instance, when you offset this by eight inches, you're gonna have a, a 15 and a half inch piece there. And then you'll be even offsetting it even more at this level. So eight inches here, 
so you have like a 23 inch piece here so everything's gonna work out well as far as having a full piece up against that tile up against the tub i should say all right so if we went a full piece here and we went down eight inches this next piece is going to be 23 inches so we'll go with a 23 inch piece Okay, so again, we're just going to pay attention to our tub for squareness. But let's find the center of our toilet flange here. So we got 11 and 5 eighths, and it's a 7 inch toilet flange. So I'll go from the tub over, I've got 14 inches. It's going to be three, a 7 inch diameter hole. Now none of this has to be perfect, it just has to be, it can't be too wildly over, but the, most toilets will cover quite a bit. Okay, so this is a Montelit um, STL blade. So this is all diamonds all the way around this whole thing. And this really makes it nice for cutting holes in tile and ceramic. And I got a chip. Oh. I'm not sure what it's. Okay, so this STL blade has diamonds all the way around on each side. So it really makes it nice to cut holes in tile because you can just kind of grind your way down rather than having to deep dive and cut because it's going around in circles is kind of tough with a four and a half inch grinder but if you can just sand it down and get it much easier Okay, so we're gonna install our floor tile. With bigger tile, you always kinda of wanna go with bigger trial sizes for coverage, but really it all depends on what kind of coverage you're actually getting. But I've had really good luck with um, just a 3 8 by um, 3 8 U-notch trial. Uh, that works pretty well for me, but you can go with 3 8 by half inch or even half inch by half inch. But if you have a fairly flat floor, 3 8 usually works, but you always wanna double check that when you're actually installing it. Um, so any other couple of things, with the larger tile, we're going to be using a wedge and clip system. So these clips kind of hold everything together. It's called T-Lock. I do highly recommend a leveling system. It's going to make it tremendously make it easier for you to install the tile. So let's go ahead and get started here. So yeah, just fill up the waffle first and then trowel. definitely want to back butter these larger tiles just using the flat side of the trowel and getting that whole back covered
So the proper way to go about going around a door jam is to actually cut out the jam, even with your tile, so you can slide underneath of it. So we're just gonna use our oscillating tool here and cut out the jam. That should work. So that slides right underneath it there nicely. Here to let until it sets. Hold it in place, make it sure it's even with the edge of the tile. Okay, so your clips, you just want to hit them parallel with the grout joints. Just, just hit them with a rubber mallet. Now, I did take, take a weekend off, so typically I really like to get these things taken out the, the day after because it makes it a little bit easier, especially with the thin set. But we're going to show you something here that will make it a little bit easier to get rid of that grout or get rid of that extra thin set. So now some of these clips are gonna break when you have too much thin set around them. But majority of them will break off cleanly. Okay, so quick tip for removing your thin set. If you took a couple days before you actually scraped out your joints, the thin set gets really tough. And, and the best way to go about uh, fixing that is using some sulfamic acid with a little bit of water, put it on a spray bottle, and just spray the joint. Now you wanna be careful what you use this on. You don't wanna put this on natural stone or marble. It could take the polish off of it or possibly do something to the stone. But most ceramic porcelains, this is a great way to soften up the thin set and be able to easily scrape everything out. Oh. Okay, so about five, 10 minutes later after letting that sit set, the, uh, the sulfonic acid, it'll be much easier to clean out your joints. And if you have any of these uh, little clips that are sticking out that broke off, you can just take a utility knife and just score it against the tile, just making sure it's below the tile layer. And I would say about an eighth of an inch is usually good. You don't have to get it all the way out of the joint. You just have to get it so it doesn't um, protrude through the grout, obviously. And then you want to be careful of your waterproofing when you do cut it. But using that sulfonic acid really softens this up and makes it a lot easier to remove this thin set. And I should mention, I'm using a little linoleum knife. That's what I use for a scraper. It makes it pretty easy to get in these joints and scrape them out.
So what we're going to use is the Spectralock 1 for the floor. This is basically the pre-mix version that they have of uh, epoxy. Now this is not epoxy, this is more of a um, urethane pre-mix type of mixture. Uh, they claim it's just as good as epoxy. I haven't, um, I actually really do love this grout. I use it for many, many projects. Um, but uh, for the floor, it's absolutely terrific. Um, it can go down to 16th inch grout joints. It never needs sealed. It doesn't crack. Uh, and one of the great things is, is that if I ever had to touch it up later on, I can just uh, open up the bucket and use it. Whereas regular epoxy, once that's mixed and it's done, you have to mix a whole new batch. So I really do love the ability to um, touch things up, especially on a floor. You're, you're always bringing things in and out and you might, um, you know, ruin the, a, a section of grout or you, you miss something or there's a little too much water in the grout joint and then tomorrow you notice that it needs to be filled in and you can do that with this. So this is really simple to use. It just right out of the, the canister, you don't even have to mix it or anything. It's already uh, ready to go. So just like any grout, grouting procedure, just use a, a damp sponge wipe down the surface of the tile and then use a, a grout float and just embed it into the into the grout joints. Cleanup time is usually about five minutes after you spread it so don't get too far ahead of yourself. You know, I would, I mean, in a floor like this, you could probably do the whole thing and not be a problem, but just know that, you know, you're typically you want to be removing this five minutes after you apply it. It's very much like the epoxy where it's, it's a little thick, but it's pretty easy to, to work with. And the color matching consistency is really great too from bucket to bucket. Okay, so washing, it's important not to have too much water on your sponge. So this, this Spectralock requires you not to have very much on it. So you just wanna use a very lightly damp sponge and just hold the joint and wipe it off. But with a nice smooth towel like this, it's actually really, really simple. So I hope this demonstration has given you a couple of things to help you out with your own project and made it a little bit more efficient for you. If you have any questions about your own specific bathroom, leave a comment below. I'd be more than happy to help. And please like and share this video that helps get this video out to others. Thanks so much.